Shaman. What's, what's, what's going on, YouTube? Washington. This is what, 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 Hey, what's going on, YouTube? This is your boy, Jamari Four here once again. I know that there are some people that are going to come at me with pitchforks and, you know, fire torches for not being here like I said I was, but... Uh, there's so, so much been going on in Jamari's little personal life, but we're going we're gonna to move forward because I wanted to... Uh, I had kind of lost interest in like a lot of the reality shows that I used to do. And I may still do them. Like I think I'll probably still do like the Love and Hip Hop reunion. Not necessarily the episodes, but I do want to, I probably will come back for like the reunion. But I wanted to get back to like the scripted TV. And so I didn't do this show last season because I was just kind of giving it this, uh, a first chance for its first season. And I really, really loved it. So we're going to come back. And throughout this season, we're going to talk about Queen Sugar. If y'all are not into Queen Sugar, I'm going to need you to get your life. I'm not sure where you can catch the first season. <clears throat> if they have it on the Watch Own app or what have you. But if you can find a way to catch up on Queen Sugar, it is an amazing show. And so for tonight, we have the premiere of season two. So the episode opens. Now, you know what? Pause. In the comments, since because um, I have really bad with names. <laughs> I'm going to preface this already and say I'm really bad with names. So, some people's names I remember. Some people's names I do not remember. Please fill in the blanks. <laughs> Please let me fill in the blanks. So, Nova's in the yard. You know, uh, we see her wrapping a gift, which we later found out uh, what it was for. Um, but, you know, she's, you know, having a good time listening to music. And then somebody comes out of her house and... It's, um, it's this uh, Caucasian man, and he's like, you know, I really enjoyed, you know, last night. I'm hoping that we could, you know, maybe hook up again. And, you know, Nova has this whole just aura about herself like, do I really have to talk to this man? I wish he would just go away. This isn't a fling. I'm not really interested in seeing you after this. It was just for that one night. Could you please leave? You know, that's pretty much the old energy. She was just like, you know, yeah. You have a good day. <laughs> and I can already tell just from this scene that this is going to be a recurring thing, which actually happened at the end of this episode. She was laying with another man who looked the exact the same way. And we know from those of you who remembered her last season, she was um, having an affair with this uh, Caucasian cop who was married to, uh, who had a wife and children and all the other stuff, but he was, they were sleeping together, going around, doing all this stuff. And then she just eventually uh, just decided to break up with him because she just wasn't with it no more. So I guess it seems like she's just doing this to kind of fill the void, maybe, which, I mean, I don't, that never is a good thing. Nova was kind of scattered to me a little bit, like overly turned up in this episode for some reason, but we'll get to it. So, <clears throat> Charlie is in a meeting uh, with probably some CEOs or just head honchos of a company that she's trying to make a business deal with. She's explaining her business plan of the farm and how she can bring in, you know, a certain percentage. And uh, long story short, they're interested. They're down for the cause. And they said, OK, fine. They said, all we need is, you know, for you and Davis, her husband's signature, and we're good to go. And she's like, well, this is my business. Davis has nothing to do with this. And they're like, well, the only reason that we were even ever interested at all is because we thought your husband was a part of it. He's the most attractive part of this deal. And so she doesn't want to necessarily jeopardize, you know, the deal because of the earning potential. But she's like, so, you know what? That's fine. I'll we'll work it out. We'll make it happen. And they said, great. And mind you, she's there with now. His, now, this is the guy's name. I do not remember. But the uh, the farmer that she was working with that she started, you know, screwing, <laughs> he kind of feels the type of a way because <clears throat> she's still married. She's still trying to get this image of her and Davis still being together in the public eye. But even though they're both clearly, you know, doing their own thing. But he's dating her. He's trying to date her, but she's still trying to keep up this whole image with her husband 
And he's just like, you know, you just got blindsided. And she's like, you know, do you want to go out for drinks? Do you want to celebrate? And he's not really with it because he's like, you're still trying to give this whole image and we can celebrate, actually celebrate when you're able to go out and have a drink with another man in public. So, you know, when somebody, when you're trying to date somebody and you're trying to be real and you're in a real relationship with somebody, you can't be on the DL, okay? Nobody wants to be hidden. Nobody wants to have to walk around in a trench coat. Nobody wants to have to be incognito all the time. When somebody that they love, they want to be able to be public. They want to hold hands. They want to be able to be out with the person that they're with. And if the person that they want to be with is too busy trying to hide them, it's going to get old. It's going to get frustrating very quickly. And I feel like, you know, that's where Odoo was coming from. And Charlie can see that. And now she's kind of like, uh-oh, I, I don't know what to do. So a quick side note on, or a quick update, I guess, on uh, Ralph Angel and his family. You know, last season we saw that him and this is an, I forget her name. I want to say it's like Layla or Lila. Put it in the comments. Um, I'll have it for next time. But him and his baby mama, they've been together recently they kind of worked things out they kind of reignited their relationship and they're going out into the field of their father's land and he says that you know with their son this part of the land is yours and as soon as he said that i'm like something tells me that charlie is not okay with this charlie charlie has not been briefed on this and you know how charlie and him kind of you know go back and forth on this whole control thing and I mean, granted, it was a great moment. You know, he explained it how this is your land. No matter no matter what, you can always come back here and live. It's yours. Nobody can take it away from you. And Aunt Vi is <laughs> bless Aunt Vi's heart. Her and her boyfriend Hollywood last season broke up. She found out he was still legally married to this other woman who was, you know, she was mentally ill and he didn't tell her and she felt lied to. So she broke up with him. And now, <clears throat> excuse me, he's working off somewhere. He wanted to get away. And now she missing him, checking his Facebook, <laughs> basically doing how we do. Like, you know how when you break up with somebody and you want to look and see how they doing without you, you go on their Facebook, you go on their Instagram to be like, as you smiling in these pictures, like, is you happy or is you out there, you know, are you sad like me right now? <laughs> <laughs> so she's sitting there getting worried and feeling crazy because he's not posting nothing and she feels like she's forgotten. I'm just like, oh, bless her heart. So we move to Nova and Nova calls Aunt Vi while she's looking on Facebook, <laughs> basically saying that, um, are we going to go out, you know, with me and Charlie to celebrate Micah's birthday? And she's like, well, why are you trying to go out and celebrate your sister's son's birthday. And she was like, well, you know, years ago she was crying and yelling and we want to celebrate, you know, when she finally popped that baby out. And I thought it was like, you know, you just want to go out so you can be on a man hunt. See, Vi Vi's already on. The she she's she's on to Nova right now. She she's clocking her right now. So where Nova was, I'm not sure where, where the location was. I think she was going to visit a friend who maybe it was a baby shower of some sort. But she was visiting someone. It turns out that the gift that she was wrapping was for a friend who was uh, pregnant with twins, I believe. And she uh, was handing her the gifts. And she uh, went over to a little circle of uh, uh, friends. Or I don't know if they were. Well, they're not, they couldn't be bridesmaids because they weren't planning a wedding. But they were all, you know, common friends. And they had this discussion about how um, single women and the stigma of if you're a, a single woman especially of of color and you're over a certain age and you're expected to have a family you're expected to have a partner you know it's this whole society norm what have you and nova basically was like i mean we basically we've really graduated beyond that like you know statistics shows that you shouldn't have a phd statistics shows you shouldn't be owning your own business and they're showing like all these women of color doing all these great and amazing things that typically society wouldn't expect them to do so you shouldn't really value yourself over having a man over having children and it can i feel like for a woman it probably is a little bit more pressure than a man um only because of the biological clock uh 
you know, they don't want to be an older woman still trying to raise kids or they don't want to be older woman still trying to get pregnant due to the possible complications that could come from being older and pregnant. So I definitely understand, but it is really true. Like you don't need, uh, you know, a partner or anybody to validate yourself. And I'm glad they kind of snuck that in there. <laughs> um, so Nova, Charlie and Aunt Vi go out, which is interesting. And, you know, they're having a good time. You know, Nova's like, you know, we're going to go out here. We're going to drink. We're going to dance. <laughs> and so they go out there. They're having a good time. Nova starts dancing up on some dude. And they start doing what they do. And in the distance, you know, you can see Charlie was like all smiles. And all of a sudden she went from and was like. You know that face you give when you see somebody that you don't want to see at the club? Usually you may or may not have slept with this person and you see that person with somebody else and you're mad about it. <laughs> that was the face that Charlie was giving me. And so we look over and I'm thinking it's about to be the uh, the farmer guy was out there with another woman. But he actually sees Davis and she walks over and Davis is laying with some, it looks like a, a, a Latin girl. And I'm like, I know she's not about to be mad right now like legit jealous because you've done all kind of things with this other farmers <laughs> even though that's not how feelings work it doesn't matter what we do if we see somebody else doing it it, may, it hurts us it's weird how we how we work like that in our minds but she's basically over there like how can you sit here and you know we work very hard to try to keep this image going of you know us still being married in the public eye like what if you what if somebody was you know out here with a camera and how can you look? How can you be here when you're supposed to be here on your son's birthday and all this stuff? And look, God was like, "Listen, listen, Micah is 16. Okay, he blew me off. He didn't answer none of my calls. So, <laughs> I mean, what do you want me to do? Like, and he's like, "Do you see any cameras here? Like, nobody's even trying to film us right now." And then Aunt Vi, after she'd had a few drinks, <laughs> they came over to uh, the booth. And was like, you should be ashamed of yourself. Did you know all the stuff that this girl has done for you? This, that, and the fourth. And she's just like going off. She done called the other girl a low life hussy and everything. I was just like, oh, <laughs> oh wow, all right. <laughs> so security comes over there and, and she's, you know, trying to take her away. She's like, don't touch me. You don't know me enough to touch me and all this other stuff. And then Nova pretty much, you know, de-escalated the situation. Like, look, I got it. I got it. We gone. <laughs> so so apparently Micah has been bought a new car for his birthday okay and he was riding the car he was on his way to a uh, family dinner for Juneteenth which actually was yesterday uh, me and my mom went out to this big concert to uh, there was a celebration of Juneteenth they gave like a historical you know uh, a recap on what it's about and all that so they're going they're trying to get together and Micah is on his way and Micah gets stopped by the police. Y'all already know where this goes. <laughs> Y'all already know where this goes. And when he's stopped by the police, they the guy asks him cuz you could already tell they were casting this to make it very current to, you know, the police brutalities that are happening in the news how Micah is a young African-American boy and the cop is an older Caucasian gentleman. And you can just tell by his demeanor <laughs> that he already had his, his intentions. So what was strange to me, oddly enough, about this situation was he told him to roll down the window. So we first he told him to turn off the engine from the car. Then he said to roll down the window. But then Micah said, well, I have to turn on the engine to roll down the windows. And I'm like, is that a new car feature? That Because I've never seen a vehicle that had to have the engine on to roll down the windows. Like, you could kind of, you know how you could just turn on the fan without turning on the whole car? That's what I was thinking, like, he was doing. He had to, he had to crank the car up completely. I don't, I don't know too much about car models to know if that's something that's normal or not. But he rolls down the window. And the guy starts asking him, do you live around here? Because uh, Michael was like, I'm not, I wasn't speeding or anything, or, you know, can you tell me what this is about? And he asked him, like, Are you, do you live around here? And I'm like, here we go. 
I don't know how that's relevant because cars are able to travel you across states. So, I mean, does my tag show where I'm at or where I'm from? And even if it doesn't, does it matter if I live here? You know, he's already starting it off in a, you know, odd or bad place. And he says, well, what did he say? I think I think Micah said, I guess. I was like, oh, Micah, that's the wrong answer. That is the wrong answer. <laughs> that is not, oh, boy. See, he messed up with that one. So he says, let me see your license. I think he uh, reached in his pocket, didn't have his license, said something about leaving it back in New Orleans or something. I'm just like, oh, no. It's just going further and further downhill from here. And he was like, well, let me see your registration. And Micah looks like he's reaching over into the glove compartment. And then that's when the officer draws his gun. Now, of course, we know that this is a very sensitive and touchy subject, especially because off of the heels of uh, Philando Castile's case being basically ruled with no justice or no real uh, pro uh, prosecution of the officer that killed him in his car with a child and another woman in the, in the seat. So I don't know what it is that's going on in this climate. We, he, Mike, you can clearly see Michael was just trying to do what the gentleman asked him to do, but still, that's, that's the reality of the situation. That's really how bad it is now. And it's, I'm glad that they're showcasing this in this light to show that this is a reality. Okay. So we don't see what happens after that. He draws the gun. Michael puts his hands up. We don't see what happens after that. And... At this point, you know, Charlie and everybody else is, uh, all the brothers and sisters are coming to Ann Vi's house. They're getting together, preparing the table. And they're like, well, Micah's not here yet. We don't know where he is. And <clears throat> his dad was trying to call him while the police was, had stopped him. But he kind of, he forwarded the phone call. And uh, Charlie tried to call him. And then... What ended up happening was while they were in prayer, Davis, his, her, Charlie's husband, tried to call her and said, you know, Micah left my house hours ago. You know, he's not there yet. Let me speak to him. I don't know why everybody's ignoring my calls. And Charlie's like, well, he must be, you know, over there with his girlfriend. So she, she tried to call the girlfriend. She hadn't seen him. So now she's worried. Okay. And now Aunt Vi tries to call Hollywood to ask, you know, to you know, show her showcase her worries, and even though she just wanted to hear his voice, it was glad that she was able, he was able to be there for her and kind of help him, or help her not be worried about it. Cause she said, "Man, he's probably he's sixteen. He's got a new car. He's out with his girlfriend. You know, he's fine." Basically, just trying to comfort her, and he was everything but fine because we pan over to where Charlie, not Charlie, but Micah is in jail, being put into custody, and you know he's never had to experience anything like this before. Uh, he tries to say, you know, can I have my first phone call? And the guy gets smart with him, like, well, I mean, you can. You just got about 400 people ahead of you. And he just breaks down and starts crying. And I'm just like, oh, my God. I just know that there's so many people who have gone through this type of situation, you know, uh, with, uh, with no real meaning to it, senselessly, basically. And so when he's taken to jail, this is the part that kind of frustrated me a little bit. It was just like... Really? So, Charlie makes it to the... Uh, she finds out... They find the car, and then they figure out, uh, made by dialing 911, which police station that he was brought to. She comes in frantic and pissed, like any mother would. <laughs> and so... She's asking, where's my son? Is he in the system? I need you to check. And the guy at the front... The guy at the front, you know... Uh, to say, well, we don't we don't really see him in the system. And she's like, look, <laughs> when you were a mom, when you were a parent and your child has definitely been unjustly arrested, 
<laughs> you don't think things clearly and you're really hotting up, your blood pressure's rising. So Nova was there to kind of act like, we called the police and the police gave us the information that he has been brought to this station. Um, can you check your system again? She's basically trying to be calm about it because she knows that acting frantically in this type of situation, especially given the circumstances, this can go bad before it goes good. And then Davis walks in and <laughs> he's like, you know, let me handle this. And the guy, he's like, you know, look, I'm trying to find my son. He kind of looks like me. And of course, the guy starts going into fan mode. He's like, hey, I hope you, you know, win this next championship or something. I'm just like, this is so disgusting. This is, this is so uncomfortable. <laughs> and he's like, you know, thank you very much. But could you possibly check your systems again? And he says, no, not in the system. And he says, could you, you know, check the holding cells just to be safe and He's like, okay, you know, I'll go check the holding cells. And then he's like, uh, while the other guy is checking, he's like, you know, you know, if you don't mind, could I, could I get a selfie with you? Listen. <laughs> I mean, I know that he's trying to, that, that that was the guy that was just trying to do his job, I guess. But I'm, if, I'm, if my son is being held up in, uh, in jail, unjustly, mind you, a selfie with you is the last thing on my mind and the last thing I really want to do. So he that's why he gave that basic un, like smile with no <laughs> real you know emphasis behind it. Cause he was pissed, like who what I'm sitting up here trying to get my son out of jail. You trying to ask me for a selfie, really? Like, <laughs> like that that bothered me. That made me so uncomfortable. And Charlie's just looking over like, I can't believe that I have to I had to depend on this man's celebrity to get my son out of jail. You could tell she was pissed. You can tell. Um, so Micah comes out and he, he's just shook. Literally shooketh. Okay. So much so that the poor man peed himself. And I was like, Lord have mercy, Jesus. So Nova helped him out and gave him a little sweater to wrap around himself to hide the fact that he just peed himself. You can only imagine what it's like to be 16 years old in a jail full of all these uh, criminals and crazy characters. You never know. And... The ending scene, well, one of the, the two ending scenes is uh, we see, I wish I could remember that girl's name. I want to say it's like Delilah, uh, uh, Ralph Angel's baby mama name. So earlier she went to one of her meetings, you know, that, that she's had for rehab and whatnot. And she explained how basically she is still uncomfortable with the relationship that she's having with Ralph Angel, even though she's wanted it for so long, she wants to make sure that she is able to properly process it and is in a, I guess, a state of mind to approach it the right way because she kind of skipped a lot of steps the first time. So she doesn't break up with him, but she kind of wants to slow things down and she doesn't want to... Uh, and she still feels a little uncomfortable around the rest of the family because she still feels like they kind of view her a certain way. And I guess she kind of wants to get everything right so that she could be the best version of herself, so to speak. So they kind of slow things down. I believe he was trying to invite her, you know, to bed to come spend a night. And she said, you know, I don't want to, I want to, you know, take things a little bit slower because I don't want to do things, you know, too fast or whatnot. And Ralph Angel thought he was breaking up with him. Let me tell you. <laughs> Ralph Angel is a beautiful man. I couldn't imagine any human being wanting to break up with him. <laughs> wanting to break up with that. I'm just saying. Um, but she says that they're not breaking up, but they just want to take things a little bit slower. So I'm like, okay, fine. And then the last scene that we see is, if you remember earlier, Charlie had that deal that wouldn't go through without David's signature. So she has the paperwork in front of her. And she writes her name, and I'm just like, please don't do it. Don't do it, don't do it, because this is going to come back and bite you. <laughs> it's going to cause you legal trouble. It's going to be worse than this. She, she forged his name. I was just like, oh, boy. Here we go. But that was the end. That was the beginning of the premiere episode of Queen Sugar. We're actually going to get a double premiere tomorrow night, so there will be another video after that. So make sure you guys check out for that one. And thank you so much. I finally passed. 
4,000 subscribers. I'm so happy about that. And if you are interested, if you were here for like my Drag Race reviews, I'm doing uh, reviews with my uh, friend Maddie Rants over on his channel. So make sure you check them out if you're here, if you're interested in Drag Race. Uh, yeah, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe, and share the video across all your social media sites. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace out. Like, share, subscribe.